So last week we learned about a future to believe in PAC, which is a super PAC started on behalf of Joe Biden by alum from Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign, namely high-ranking advisors like Jeff Weaver, started a super PAC to boost Joe Biden specifically by targeting progressives to get them to be more inclined to support Joe Biden, which is uh, not only a waste of time and resources, but it's not a good look. Like, even if you genuinely weren't being a ranked careerist, it's just the optics in and of itself isn't going to, isn't going to make you successful, right? Progressives aren't going to be receptive to a super PAC telling them what to do. Um, and now we're learning that Justice Democrats, a week after that, started their own super PAC. Yeah. Now, I will say that David Dole released a phenomenal and informative video where he does talk about the real differences between hybrid PACs and super PACs and how not all PACs technically are bad because you have organizations, and we talked about this before on the show too, like National Nurses United, where they technically have their own super PAC, but they still mostly just take contributions from membership. But when you see super PACs started specifically at the behest of candidates, like a future to believe in PAC for Joe Biden, that's an issue. And for Justice Democrats, we don't have all of the details. We don't know what their intentions are yet. But I will tell you, I'm highly skeptical because this is to support candidates. And the number one reason for us to elect Justice Democrats is to get clean, uncorrupted candidates in Washington, so we don't have to compete with all of the other corrupt figures who take super PAC money. So it seems like this flies in the face of their organization's entire goal. Nonetheless, here's some details here. Politico tweeted, Justice Democrats are forming their own super PAC, the latest liberal group to adopt a big money fundraising and spending operation as the left tries to imagine a movement post Bernie Sanders presidential campaign. And Zach Montalero of Politico explains a little bit further, Justice Democrats, the hub for insurgent Democrats, has joined the rank of super PACs. On Friday, the group's PAC filed a notice with the Federal Elections Commission announcing that it intends to become a so-called carry committee, which is also known as a hybrid PAC, effectively forming a super PAC in addition to their already active PAC. The move is the latest example of the party's liberal wing embracing the fundraising strategies that have been scorned by some on the left. A spokesperson for the Justice Democrats did not respond to a voicemail or email left by SCORE on Sunday asking to talk about the group's plans. A group of top aides to Sanders' presidential bid announced last week that they were forming a super PAC of their own to convince Sanders supporters to back Biden. Chuck Roca, another Sanders aide, also formed his own super PAC called Nuestro PAC that aims to mobilize Latino voters. All right, so let's talk about the implications of this. I will say right off the bat that we do have to be nuanced here because if they were releasing a PAC to, you know, organize people or spread awareness about an issue, that wouldn't be as bad, right? Because we went over this when people like Elizabeth Warren were accusing Bernie Sanders of taking PAC money because, you know, he got support by issue-oriented organizations like Sunrise Movement, Dream, Dream Defenders. Um, that's not necessarily the same thing. Although there is a lot of room for nuance. I mean, Nina Turner started a PAC, but this is based around an issue to, you know, get progressive causes uh, amplified, right? So I'm a lot less skeptical about the issue-oriented advocacy organizations. Try to say that three times. Um, but when it comes to these types of super PACs that pop up in support of a candidate or candidates, oftentimes that's a bad sign because it just, tells us that they want to skirt campaign finance laws and take more than the maximum. I mean, Elizabeth Warren had a super PAC because she had a rich woman want to give her $12 million or $11 million, and her super PAC was almost entirely funded by that individual. So usually it is bad if it is, you know, centered on any one candidate. But there's room for nuance, and just as Democrats, you know, I'm willing to listen if they explain themselves, but their silence here really is deafening. And they've got to know that the optics here are not good. And let me just say this, from my own position, I'm deeply skeptical that this is going to be something that is good for the progressive movement. Um, anytime you're creating a super PAC, 
that's a red flag. I'm immediately skeptical unless you've been in the game for a while like Nas National Nurses United and you've done demonstrably good things like elevate Medicare for all. But with Justice Democrats, I'm sorry. I don't trust them. And it's based on my own firsthand experience. First of all, Kyle and Jenk, when they left the organization, I thought it was disgusting in the way that Jenk was pushed out. And I applaud Kyle for remaining principled and following him. But I defended them. And after I defended Kyle and Jenk, I put out a video. They unfollowed me on Twitter. Like, how petty is that? How petty is that? They unfollowed me. Now, I don't necessarily care that they unfollowed me, but it just shows that this organization doesn't want to be questioned. Furthermore, I've talked to dozens of candidates between 2018 and 2020 who are running for Congress, and the consensus from almost all of them, off the record, is that Justice Democrats is not a very helpful organization. They don't necessarily provide them with enough resources to be competitive. And on top of that, in terms of like providing them with campaign infrastructure or hiring recommendations, they're just not very good. They're not good. Contrarily, Brand New Congress is a very helpful organization. Any candidate that I know who's associated with Brand New Congress has nothing but glowing things to say about Brand New Congress. And I can say that Brand New Congress is great because they saw that I was interviewing a lot of candidates in this election cycle and they literally reached out to me and they said, hey, Mike, we see that you're doing interviews. Let us know if you want to interview any of our candidates. We'll put you in touch with them. We'll make it easy. Like, that's what you want to do if you're genuinely trying to get people elected. But in this cycle, they've only endorsed a couple of candidates. Jessica Cisneros, and they ran a fantastic campaign with her. They're trying to, you know, really focus their resources on a couple of candidates. And Jamal Bowman, great. But, I mean, they're not doing as much as they were doing when Kyle and Jenk were in charge. And I think that that's a problem. The thing is, I'm never going to tell you anything negative about Justice Democrats' candidates because I think their candidates largely are excellent. I have my criticisms, you know, when it comes to Ayanna Presley, another pro-Warren Democrats that they have in their ranks. But... You know, if you look at Jamal Bowman, phenomenal candidate. If you look at Ilhan Omar, you know, she came from Justice Democrats, AOC. These are great candidates. But the organization itself, I think there's some issues. So, look, I'm not going to try to sour your, your opinion on Justice Democrats because there is some, you know, value in these types of organizations. But rule number one is always try to support the candidates directly and not necessarily these types of organizations that they're affiliated with. Second of all, I do think that this group has changed since Kyle and Jenk left. But I won't say that you should, you know, disregard this organization. Let's hear them out, see what they issue in response to the formation of this super PAC. But I will say, myself, I don't like it. I think this is a bad move. I think that, you know, this is most likely a sign of negative things to come. But I am going to be enthusiastic if they prove me wrong. I mean, the whole point was to um, run non-corrupted candidates. And if you're taking super PAC money, where we're not going to be able to trace where that money is coming from, depending on how transparent they are, I mean, it defeats the whole purpose of the organization. What's the point of having it? Yeah, so um, I will say nothing but love to Kyle and Jenk. I think that without them, this organization would be nothing. And also Saika Chakrabadi, who was incredibly influential, you know, in building this organization, Corbin Trent. But the people who are in control of it now, I just, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe they're trying to get a little bit more, you know, calculative to actually get power in D.C. I don't understand what they're doing. I hope that they're, you know, operating with our best interests in mind. With that being said, based on what I know, I'm very skeptical of them. And I just, frankly, I don't trust them. So this move to me, it leaves a really, really bad taste in my mouth. A worse taste in my mouth than I already had when thinking of Justice Democrats based on, you know, everything that I've heard from candidates who were very disappointed, who didn't feel like this organization actually helped them get elected, and that had they actually provided them with the campaign support that they were re requesting, they could have actually won their primaries. So now, maybe they bit off a little bit more than they could chew in 2018, and now having a narrow focus on like a couple of candidates, you know, um, it makes more sense logistically speaking for them but i just i don't know i don't know what they're doing lately i think that some of their actions you know dating back to when they tried to push out jank doesn't make sense and uh i don't know i'm leery of them but i'm willing to hear them out